Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Um, I wanted to ask you, did, did you grew up in LA, right? I did. Yeah. I well, Orange County as well, but I was born in LA and then um, I lived a portion of my life in both places. So did you go to high school in LA or Orange County? In Orange County. And um, what was that like? Um, cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's like by the beach and stuff. It's like nice and pretty mellow out there and, and lots of space. And I don't know. That's where I got really involved in music and stuff. Was that Huntington Beach you were near? Right near there, yeah. Yeah. I lived in L.A. for 14 years, so I know my way around um Orange County a little bit. Um, when when did you start taking an interest in music? And do you remember some of the first songs that you used to listen to and you heard when you were young that got you interested? Um, yeah, I well, I remember I was a, a, a really, I don't know, probably like around six. Uh, I lived in LA and I can remember going to garage sales and my mom uh, picking up Beatles albums for me. Oh, cool. Yeah, just like beat up old Beatles albums. And then uh, my brother and myself, we'd make little clubhouses in the backyard with refrigerator boxes and stuff we'd find <laughs> in the neighborhood. And then I had a little, um, like a little 45 turntable and I'd hook it up and I'd listen to my records in the clubhouse. Nice. Yeah. So you went to vinyl at a young age. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, That's I, cool. I love I'm a little collector, I suppose. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm all about the vinyl. I'm so happy that vinyl's made such a huge comeback because oh, yeah. I have all these records and you know, and I've been lugging them around with me all over the place. Uh, do you remember when you first started playing an instrument? Now I know you play a lot of different instruments. Do you remember when you started and what your first instrument was? Uh, yeah, actually, um, my first instrument was clarinet. I did that in elementary school. I played clarinet for five years. And that was kind of really my introduction um, to music and like reading music a little bit. I'm not like great at reading music, but I can. And um, and I also took piano lessons around that time as well. Piano lessons. That explains yeah. the keyboards. Well, well, a little bit, just a little. Because <laughs> when I got in the Pandora's, I was really new to it. Yeah. Like you were only 17 when you joined the Pandora's, right? Were you still in high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was young. I was I, I got involved in the music scene pretty young. I, I was running around doing a lot of stuff when I was in high school and, and coming up to L.A. and going to like all the cool garage cl clubs and stuff like that. Do you remember some of the clubs that you were going to to see bands? Um. Well, there were like a lot of like soul dance clubs and mod oh. clubs and stuff I was involved in. But um, yeah, there was the Lhasa Club up in Hollywood and uh, a place called Gino's Dance Club. And then, mm -hmm. of course, like uh, in Orange County, I one of my first places I would go to a lot was the Concert Factory, which ha had been the Cuckoo's Nest for like the whole punk scene. But that was a little before my time. And so mine was like more the mod stuff. And I did a lot of stuff there. There was Safari Sam's down in Huntington Beach as well. Right. Oh, yeah. I remember that place. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really fun place. Okay. Now, the Pandora's had already been a, had one record out when you joined. I think Hot Generation, the single, was the first thing you played on. Yeah. So when I joined the band, uh, at the actually the eve of the night of that first album, um, It's About Time album, it came yes. out. And I had joined the band, Karen and myself and this girl, Julie and Paula, Paula wanted to start a new band. And so pretty much immediately she, she said, let's record. So we went like about a week later after being in the band, we went to LA and recorded at this studio called Silvery Moon with Gary Stern and Greg Shaw. And we did a hot version and you don't satisfy. So that was a single, she wanted to get that out. She had a new band and she wanted to show off her new band even though her new album came out. But she was like, all right, let's get this out, too. So. Oh, so the members all changed. Right. Now, how how did you meet Paula? Um, So I met her in the music scene. Like I said, I was she was she was considerably older than me and she was pretty cool and rad. And yeah. I see her out at these clubs and I even though I was underage, I could get into these clubs and I kind of knew her from afar. 
and we were in the same like garage 60s scene so it was like oh wow and eventually she just you know I dressed all 60s and stuff and she'd see me around and I did see the original Pandora's play a number of times and she would get upset at the shows and then she would come up to me and she was like do you know how to play instrument and I'd be like no no I don't know and I'm all scared and stuff and um and then this one time um my boyfriend at the time he's like she knows how to play piano and so Paul was like, really? And then she gave me her number, got my number. And it was like that. She like, I talked to her like the next day and she gave me three songs to learn. I learned them. I tried out and she like right there on the spot said, do you want to join the Pandora's? I said, nice. And Greg Shaw was the first person you recorded with. That's pretty intense. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, Bomp is like legendary. So um, you were in the band for a while, like a few years, and um, made a couple of records with them. And there's a live I've, record. I've been in the band the whole, the whole existence of the band, pretty much. I'm the longest person that's ever played with Paula Pierce. Really? Yeah, just like musically. So it must have been really sad for you when Paula passed away at such a young age. Yeah, it was, you know... Obviously, Kim Shattuck was my best friend, but Paula had also been my best friend. You know, we're all family. When you're in a band together, you you are family. You do everything together. Your sisters, your you know, even though we weren't playing together at the time because Kim and I had already started the Muffs. Um, you know, it was it was. I had just spoke to Paula like about a week or so before a couple weeks, and she her last words to me were she was so proud of me because I was playing guitar now and you know Kim and I had started the band and she was really really proud of me and it was a great conversation and of course something like so tragic you know you you don't expect it it was my birthday me and Kim were out and Paula died you know it just it devastating devastating this person well I met Paula I mean I I I I owe a lot to her. I was a naive young kid and man, I learned so much from that badass chick that she wasn't like anybody else in this world. I wish she was still around. I wish all the people around me that didn't know her. Know yeah, her. I met, I met Paula and I, I, I loved her. She was so awesome. You know, she was like really cool. She signed uh my it's about time album for me i have that record still with her autograph on it i was really That's young so when cool. I like it. so you know you know that like there was nobody like her she was just real and yeah. I, how I am i'm just real I, no bullshit man and like same with kim totally the same thing and it, it, you know the world's full of so many crazy things and 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 you know sometimes paul paula people would be like oh my god i can't believe it but Man, she was cool. It was cool. Yeah. She was just so talented, too. Yeah, you know, in the in the early two thousands, when all this the garage rock thing came back, and you know, underground garage and all this stuff happened, people were acting like it's the first time that ever happened. And I was thinking the Pandoras were like, you know, like bands like you guys were doing what everyone was doing twenty years later. You know, I mean, you guys were like, and I know you guys repeated what was going on in the sixties, but it was a more modern version. So I yeah, always look exactly. Let me tell you a little bit, a, a little trivia there too. So you say Underground Garage, Little Steven, he's a huge fan of the Pandoras, and um, he he when he started, you know his show and all that, he was playing us early on, you know, and then also I'm on his label with my other band, the Coolies as well. Right. Yeah. I know Steven. I mean, I worked with him with, a, with other bands, but the, th cause a lot of bands that I managed were all, all I went to garage rock, you know, so all the bands <laughs> I worked, the charms, go, go, girls, Pan uh, I almost said the Pandora's love me nots, you know, those bands were all kind of yeah. like, they're like the next generation after the Pandoras, you know, of what you guys were doing, um, especially the all girl bands, you know. Yeah. Um, so did, when you guys left, you guys left the Pandoras uh, to start the Muffs or did the band break up or? No. So what happened, you know, you had said to me earlier about 
we had put our out a record, you know, we did, we had uh, Stop Pretending on Rhino Records, right. and then we were signed to Electra Records, and we have a, a album that never came out. We, you know, recorded for a couple of years and did the whole thing where it was actually ready to come out. It had a title, had photos, everything, and uh, it didn't. We got dropped, and so then we signed to Restless Records, right. and we put out a record on Restless, and kind of after that, that, that one had some some K Rock, uh, a lot of K Rock airplay on on the main uh, main shows and stuff like that. And then after that, Paula started going in a really 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 rock direction. Yeah, you know, I remember. It got, it got it definitely was not my taste or um, Kim Shattuck's either. You know, nothing like to us, but it's our our band. You know, we're all together doing this we've done this forever and so we continue doing it and and at one point her and I, I I decided I wanted to play guitar and so I bought a guitar and I just kind of like started this was like the last year in the Pandoras and um I just started watching them and I, I learned how to play guitar so Paula goes do you want to play guitar in a song so I did I would play it on lick it up <laughs> by kiss and so that was my introduction to first playing guitar live and then um i think i also played like queens and noise maybe or something and so at that point so about a year before even really doing the muffs kim and i started practicing because like we would practice before we had pandora's practice and um she had Kim had songs. Kim wanted to sing. Kim wanted to to uh, play guitar as well. I wanted to play guitar, and we just wanted to have our own band. We went a band to play music we liked, you know, because we we were, you know, not into like what our other band had become, and so that's really kind of how it started. And leading up to that, then then um, in the end of the Pandora's, Paula had decided she did not want keyboards anymore and told me this was at the very, very end, just months before the end of the band, we were supposed to go to Europe and the Pandora's had never gone to Europe. And basically she kicked me out of the band. And even though she did not want to kick me out of the band, she did. And and it was just, the, she felt um, for, she wanted to make it so bad and she didn't realize the thing that she did great was writing those pop garage songs man she was so great at that and she's going in this other rock direction and she felt there wasn't a place for keyboards in the band anymore so you know it was pretty devastating but at the same point same time me and Kim were already going to do the muffs even though we weren't called the muffs yet so Kim goes I'm staying for two more months and Kim stayed for uh like a month let's see yeah one or two more months and then paula decided because paula's boyfriend couldn't go to europe that they weren't going to go to europe and so kim quit and that that was it basically and you know then we started the muffs you know i have a really good memory of what happened and i know steve pross signed them to electra and it turned into a complete fiasco he got fired the band yeah. got dropped I know the whole story, you know, and I you refreshed my memory a little bit. And I did not want to see the Pandoras go in the direction they went in either. I was really surprised that it became more of a hard rock band. Yeah. And I didn't, I was shocked actually, because Paula is like a garage rock, you know, yeah. singer. So I, I didn't, I, I know exactly what you were probably going through. Not exactly, but I can feel it. <laughs> Before we talk about the muffs, I brought this up before we got on and I have to, I think it's funny because I have to ask you how you got involved with Bill Bartell because he always had all these interesting projects like White yeah. Flag and Tater Tots and you're on these records. You're on a White Flag record. You're on Tater Tots. What was that all about? So I met, it's funny because I just did this in the Bill Bartell. There's going to be a documentary on him. But nice. um, I met him through Red Cross and um, uh, I met him in the mid eighties and he, he, I would see him at first and he was this guy in the little hot pants, his handlebar mustache, and he looked like a police officer. And he'd be up there like go-go dancing and shaking his ass to Red Cross. And, and then 
um, I was hanging out, I was with Jeff and we were going somewhere and Bill Bartell went with us. <laughs> like, oh my God. Jeff, Jeff McDonald you were with? Yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and so we were going somewhere and we were going on a plane and Bill was with us. And that was my, <laughs> my first introduction to Bill. And he, we, we were going to San Francisco and we got, uh, off the plane we're walking down the street and bill is just being obnoxious and then he turns around and he there's a whole like school of kids and he turns around and he goes god doesn't love you <laughs> and like, oh my god i can't i can't believe this and if anyone knows bill bartell you know he's like wild and all that and so that was my first introduction and then we became friends and then he you know he um he asked he was just always around a lot of like fun things. And then through the years, he started asking me and Kim like to play on tater tot stuff. So we, we, we sang on some of them. I don't know what's on the album we're talking about, but I know we did one with Shree Curry and different ones. And then obviously like in the muffs, we had Bill produced our first singles, all the, the first muff singles that ever came out. And then, you know, it just goes on and on through the years. He started like, Bill, like, I actually went to, like, he, uh, he was a police officer. I'm, like, the person that actually went to his graduation, so I saw it for real. He and really was a police officer? <laughs> oh. He was. We'll let the documentary talk about that. Wow. Anyway. Yeah, well, I get to know Bill because he had Gasatanka Records, and he yeah. brought some... Uh, the FUs was the first band he brought to us at Enigma, and I got to know Bill. And that's why when he got in touch with me about the Alien Sleaze Stacks, I can't even say it, Alien Sleaze Stacks from Brazil, Unfinished Music Volume 3. I'm like, well, we got to put this out. And I know you're on that record. That's why I had to bring that up. He, he was fine, like the coolest, greatest bands. He had great taste. And this is a little funny. He, at one point, even had Gasatanka Records address coming to my address. Like all his <laughs> mail. And it was like, he would do shit like this. So funny person. Yeah, right. it's too bad he's gone now. He was a good guy. I, know, I love Tom. I feel like we're going to be talking about a lot of people that have passed away in this interview, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so the Muffs. So yeah. you and Kim decided you wanted to start the band and yeah. you got off, you got out of the box really good with that band. Yeah, I, I would say so. We, um, like I had already said, we were already rehearsing. And then at the time, Ronnie was Kim's boyfriend because we're right. like, we play bass and we're like, oh, Ronnie will play bass. And then we had um, our friend Dave Nasworthy. Oh yeah, Naz, yeah. Yeah, Naz, we rehearsed at his house. So he kind of filled in and he played drums. <laughs> And then um, we started looking for a drummer. We wanted Roy McDonald, who had already been, um, Roy was our friend. I had actually, and I had dated Roy uh, too at one point, but he was our first choice in drummers and he couldn't do it at the time. So he gave us Chris Krause's information and that's how Chris got in the band. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Cause they weren't, they worked together and Chris was available and that was it. And, and, and then, you know, we started practicing and then decided on what our name was going to be. And Boy, know. that's really funny that you rehearsed at Dave's. I was there because I remember down by law was rehearsing there, yeah. Dave Smalley's band. And I went with him over there one day and we went to the back bay is there was a garage kind of thing in the back of the big house and l7 was in there practicing i got to meet them and i became friends with jennifer and it was at dave naz's house in beverly hills no yeah, that's that's where all this take place like um so pandora's we were the first band that ever rehearsed at dave's house was the chili peppers and wow they, yeah they rehearsed there for a very brief time and Dave, who also was very young, he and I were both in our teens when we when we first met, and he had come and seen the Pandora's play at the Palace, and he sent a little note through to our manager, and he said if we wanted to rehearse we, there, we could. Wow. He like, he let us rehearse there, like, free. And so the uh, Chili Peppers, he, he, he had, got rid of them, uh, <laughs> rehearsing there. 
And then that was us. And so we rehearsed and rehearsed her. And then the, the next band that he invited to rehearse her was Red Cross. Wow. And, and then that's L7, then L7 came a little later. Yeah. But then, you know, a lot of bands rehearsed there and a lot of bands that, that Dave Naz also played in, you know. It was a, it was a fun great chemical movie. people. Yeah. The chemical oh, yeah, people, great, especially. Great, great yeah. It seems like all of that's connected, you know, cause Bill Bartell is probably connected to all of that. too. Oh, <laughs> yes. No, we all were family. All of us <laughs> would hang out there and uh, we were up there. We would rehearse five, six times a week and every, all the bands. I mean, it was a great thing. We go to dinner, we go, you know, hang out all the time. It was wonderful. So you you were with the Muffs for only one album, and uh, I was going to ask you. You left, I think, right before the second album came out. I I read somewhere. Uh, what happened? Did you just run your course with that style of music, or did you decide? Uh, um, it, it, I, I'm not really going to say much about it, but uh, so I was in I was in the band until. Uh, the night before going in to record the second album. Wow, that was right before the second album. Okay. Yeah. Now I was supposed to be on that. And um it was just stuff that was going on with Kim and me. And it's things that shouldn't have happened. And I didn't want to leave the band. But that's what happened. And that's really all I'm gonna say about it. And you don't, you, you know, could, you don't have to say more. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, through the years, it's a horrible, horrible thing. It shouldn't have happened. All of that. And then through the years, Kim and I, um, you know, Kim and I were always meant to be together and we, this should have never happened. And, you know, thank goodness later on we got back together and we were together till the end so pandora's yeah we're going to talk about that because i know the pandora's reunited um years but later I mean in general as friends me and her you know have ne we were best friends beyond life you know it's just yeah. for each of us we both never had another person like each of us to each other yeah Sometimes people just need a break, you know, I guess. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, you did a lot with the leaving trains. I, yeah, I did you, that. I did that too. Yeah. I played with James for uh, a long time, like 10 years actually. And you did, and you wrote a bunch of songs too in that I band. Did. Yeah. I wrote a lot of songs with James. Yeah. What was I, that experience like? What was that? What was that experience like when you were leaving trains? Um, Okay, so that was after it wasn't in the muffs anymore, and about you know, uh, uh, a little bit after then they asked they asked me to join. James asked me to join. It was fun, you know. I I'm on some albums. I'm on an SST album and some other albums, and we toured, and we played we played a lot, and um, uh, I learned a lot from that too, you know. And I started writing a lot more songs because in the muffs I had written one song. But in the living trains, a lot, a lot, yeah, definitely, a not a lot, a lot more, and you know, it was a great experience. It was, I'm grateful for all the different bands and experiences that I've had. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here to the uh, Pandora's reunion yeah. shows because I noticed you were in all the various lineups. There were a lot of different versions when the reunions yeah. happened, uh, but. You're okay. Yeah. You were perm you were the one person that was in all of them, basically. Even the the uh sorry, I can't remember the name. The uh Tigerellas, which was actually like a Pandora's tribute, right? Okay, so that's new. That's our new that's the newest thing we're doing, and that is because for obvious reasons, there is no more Kim, there is no more Paula. We are right. not the Pandoras, but all of us the the girls my girls we love playing together we love it so much you know this has like been our 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 life doing this so we just you know it's it's a way for us to still play and uh we do play some pandora songs but we also play other songs as well and so we you know we came up with a name to call ourselves 
And at first we had, we had done it because we got asked to do a show and we really liked it. And then we got asked to do another show and we have another show coming up. So, you know. I didn't get to see any of those Pandora's reunion shows. And I know you guys actually made it to the East coast. There was a lot of excitement around those shows. Was, wasn't there? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so when we actually reformed Pandora's with Kim singing, um, we did, we, we did some Minneapolis shows. We love Minneapolis. Those are always really super fun. Some amazing shows we played there and we did the East coast, but we also made it to Europe. Oh, <laughs> After, you did. We did. We did. We th did three weeks in Europe and it was incredible. It was the, like the people were so thrilled, you know, to come and see us. And they said they waited their whole life for this because we were supposed to go. And these were diehard fans and it was, it was a great feeling and experience. It was kind of crazy. We played every day for like, you know, three weeks straight. Wow. But, um, you know, I'm really glad we got to do it and, and we played amazing shows and we played, um, had like this incredible festival in Spain and, and, you know, we played everywhere over there. So it was awesome. Whose idea was it in the first place to reunite the band? Well, I am going to give that credit to Sherry. Sherry, Sherry. Was, Sherry was the drummer when, yeah. uh, you know, for the Restless record. Yeah. Um, and uh, she was having a party and she's like, hey, do you, do you guys want to just play a couple songs at my party? Just for the heck of it. And at the time, Kim was playing in the Pixies. And right. so, yeah, Kim was on tour with the Pixies and she was unable to do it. And it was just, just for that party. And then me and Sherry and Karen, we were hanging out, having salads and just playing. It was really fun. And then Kim got back and she's like, I want to do this. Let's do this. So we just started doing it. We started playing Pandora songs and then I think Kim Kim goes, do you guys want to play Minneapolis? And we're like, yeah. And then she he she uh, hooked us up with her friend, Chavez Raymond, who is now one of my best friends. And yeah, so he brought us there and we played this great show with the Liars. And, and that was kind of really the beginning of it. We, you know, and then, you know, we took it from there and did some fly in, fly outs type of shows and, and some really great shows around town and stuff. So it's awesome. I I just put a, sh a new show out today with Lori Barbero from Babes in Toyland because oh, yeah. you mentioned Minneapolis, so I had to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. and in, in the Muffs, we play with Babes in Toyland. Wow, that's an interesting bill. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I know you've been playing with Josie Cotton. Are you still with Josie Cotton now? Yeah, I'm a backing musician in her band, so um, I've toured with her. I've, I've played with her for over three and a half years. Um, but, um, you know, I play some shows with her. Cool. Yeah. And um, and here's something else I know about, because I just spoke to Chris from The Brood the other okay. day, and she told me that you're going to play with them at Wild Weekend in Spain. I am. I am playing keyboards. Um, that Four weeks from today, I am going to be in Mallorca, Spain. So I'm really super excited and um, you know, we, looking back then, the Pandora's like really early on, we had played um, a show with with the Brood, and it's like so funny, like not funny, but like whoa, like that's pretty wild. They asked me if I wanted to play keyboards in the Brood in Spain, and I was like, wow, this is really really cool. This is this is really great, and I, there couldn't be a greater uh, uh, type of band for me. To, to play in and Chris is really cool so I'm looking forward to it oh yeah they're definitely like th there's a lot of similarities there with the sounds oh, yeah. Of, yeah without a doubt now because I like there, there's a lot of songs we're doing for this and it's very exciting yeah I had to bring that up because I was just talking yeah, to them about that, that. Yeah, yeah that's pretty cool um you mentioned that you're into vinyl and you have a lot of vinyl and stuff. Do you, are you, have you been buying a lot of records all along? I mean, are you like, do you buy records still? And is your collection like enormous? Um, it's kind of all over the place. <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> slobby, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of never get rid of stuff or, or vinyl really. Um, 
yeah, I've just always kind of, I mean, I'm not hardcore collector or anything like that, but if we're on tour and stuff like that, I'll go into record stores and I'll come back with a pile of records and I'm looking at some right now. It's just, I still have a lot of fun doing that. And of course, you know, uh, music that I'm on too, when it comes out on vinyl, that's always super exciting as well. I have a hot generation seven inch single. I love that record. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> I know. I don't think there's very many of those around. It's probably but worth it. That's 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 a that's a good one. Yeah, and I got like the I don't have I have CDs of the other records, but I only have it's about time on vinyl. Unfortunately, um, do you listen to a lot of new music? Are there any new bands and stuff that you've been listening to lately that you um, like, or how do you find your new music, or you just go back to the older stuff? I mean, uh, you. I listen, like music to me, music is life. Music is like, like everything. I wake up, I put music on, everything I do, music, 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 music. I love it. I feel it in my body. Um, is there a lot of new stuff? Maybe some, you know, I'm super open to it. I'll say there's a lot that I am like here and like, eh, eh. But you know, then there's some I hear and I'm like, wow, that's really good. Now I do have a wide, uh, range of different kind of music I like because I like um, a lot of um, obviously garage stuff pop pop stuff a lot of rockabilly country stuff and jazz all kinds of you know lots of soul and funk different things so I I mean I can't specifically tell you like a brand new band there there is one record I heard recently and I think he's really great his name is Theo I can't remember his Theo. last name that's so Theo. something Theo and he has a, a, a song called Sheree share it with a C but anyway, <laughs> it's like a country it's like it sounds old like country rockabilly it's so good he's really good that's that's I, I'd have to look it up I'm sorry I'm that's sorry. okay that's I'm okay I was just curious. <laughs> yeah I was I was just curious I know you've played on a lot of people's records too because I I saw a record recently on Rumbar BB Galini I think it was did you play on that record oh okay I did play on uh something with them over the summer I, it's not on a record yet but I did play on four uh, uh they recorded four songs I played on three of the songs I must have read that somewhere because I yeah, thought, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, you probably did. And then Russell from the Mummies, he also, he he sang on one of the songs. And um, this guy, Keith Patterson, he played on them as well. It's like, it, it was like a real fun hangout. In yeah, I'm in Boston and it's a Boston label that she's on. That's why I, I that's where I heard about it. Definitely. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I played on theirs. I played on the Crusados. I put on a song for the Crusados. Um the Crusados. Uh, wow, yeah, I haven't heard yeah. that name in a while. They used to be the plugs, right? Yeah, yeah, they originally were the plugs, and then Tony reformed the Crusados like a few years ago, and I played on a song. That's and, cool. Um, so that's really cool. And then I um uh I played like me and Palmyra uh Del Ran, we sing on Radio Days, their band from Italy. We sing on a song. You know, there's lots lots of different there's there's a number of them I could go on, but, um, you know, there's also our, Palmyra and I have the coolies. Right. With, you know, it, it was with Kim, but we still, we still do the coolies. We just had a single that came out, um, maybe five months ago. And, um, that had, um, Clem Burke and Kathy Valentine on it. And nice. We make sure that we have Kim on all recordings like somehow, you know, even though she's not here, she wasn't able to record on that song, but she's on it. She's, you know, the people that bought the actual vinyl single will get to hear both sides and it's it's a nice treat, but she's definitely on it. And that was for a Go-Go's comp. Nice. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, You've had a great career and you're still going strong. So I really appreciate you coming on the show and talking about all yeah. these cool bands and everything and i wish you nothing but luck and good luck in spain man that's gonna be awesome i cannot wait i am like so thrilled thank you very much all right you take care thanks a lot yeah you too thank right. you right. bye bye